New year, same podcast. Well, maybe more like video series than podcast, but either way, thanks for joining. In my last video, I answered a viewer's question on strategies for passive income. At the end, I teased another investment strategy income investors should consider, total return investing. But wait, there's more. This episode is not just for income-oriented investors. Interested in the hidden powers of total return investing? Let's get to it. First off, let's define income investing versus total return investing so we're all on the same page. Broadly speaking, income investing involves a portfolio of dividend paying stocks, bonds, real estate, or other assets designed to consistently generate cash. More details on some of these investments in my last episode. On the other hand, total return investing involves both income generating assets and those that can grow through capital gains. Here's a great graphic from Vanguard explaining how portfolios are constructed under each strategy. A total return approach starts with goals and risk tolerance, which determines asset allocation, then allows for spending from income and capital return. Whereas an income approach starts with a yield or income target, which determines asset allocation, which could end with more risk exposure than intended. Okay, so what am I getting at here? Well, many people assume that if their portfolio generates enough income to live on, they'll never have to sell anything and they'll be set for retirement. Easy. But believe it or not, that kind of inflexibility can be risky. Why? Well, a laser focus on higher yielding investments could mean taking on more risk. See this chart from Bloomberg showing that some higher yielding investments come with greater risk. This chart shows various income investments from U.S. Treasuries at the left to high yield corporates at the right. The blue bars represent the average yield to worst, and the red bar below is the corresponding worst 12-month rolling total return for that investment. The higher yielding investments had lower total returns from 12 31 1999 to 1 22 with preferred securities notching the lowest at negative 53.3%. By focusing solely on income, a high yield strategy might pigeonhole you into certain investments, whereas a total return approach could have growth stocks, dividend stocks, exchange traded funds, bonds, or alternatives like real estate. A total return strategy will have a growth component to potentially appreciate faster than inflation. You know, the record high inflation we've all been feeling lately. Plus, it'll have an income component, which, of course, provides money to live on. Something else to consider? Your portfolio might not generate enough income to support your lifestyle. There's an old rule of thumb for retirement spending known as the 4% rule. It states you can withdraw 4% from your portfolio in your first year of retirement. Then in subsequent years, you can adjust that amount for inflation. If you stick to that 4%, there's a very high probability of not outliving your money during a 30-year retirement. Okay, let's summarize a bit. When combined with a prudent spending rule, a total return investing strategy has several advantages compared to an income approach. Diversification. Total return portfolios tend to be much more diversified across asset classes. Tax efficiency. Investors with a total return approach may pay less in taxes because part of their payment comes from capital gains. And long-term capital gains have a more favorable tax treatment than income tax rates. And last, flexibility. Total return investors can spend from capital gains in addition to portfolio income and have more control over the size and timing of portfolio withdrawals. Now, a risk of using a total return approach is having to sell investments that have fallen in value. But the intent is that by investing across a broad range of investments, as opposed to just income producing ones, this should enhance your portfolio's overall returns and reduce volatility. Don't get me wrong, I like dividend paying and income producing investments, and we like incorporating them into a diversified allocation. In fact, dividends have been a significant component of total return. This chart by Ned Davis shows dividend income return, blue bars, compared to total return for the S&P 500, green bars, from 1-1-1930 to 12-31-2021, 40% of the total return of the S&P 500 came from dividend income. Okay, let's wrap this up. 
I covered income-oriented investments in my last episode and discussed total return investing at a high level just now. So what's my take? I believe that we can't time the market or sectors, so a balanced, diversified approach is best. What do you make of these two approaches? Let me know. If you liked this video and don't want to miss out on future episodes, subscribe to this channel. Thanks for joining.